Hello, hello, hello and welcome, welcome to my little capsule. This video is a small part of tutorial series called Interactive Architecture, where I'll be showing you how you can make all sorts of different things with Unreal Engine. Today we'll learn the basics of adding materials to our scene. So I guess without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Alright, let's talk about materials. So the first thing that you will notice is that I have removed all of the materials from my scene because we will be using this opportunity to create them again. So first, what we want to do is under content, um, anywhere here, we want to create a folder for the materials to be sitting in, right? So I like to do this for, the, let's say, uh, the Nakagin uh, capsule, right? Uh, inside of that folder, I will just create a new folder called new folder right there called materials. You can create new folders by right clicking on the any empty space in your content browser and choosing new folder, right? Like so. Inside of it, I will be creating one more folder called instances. New folder instances. So there are two types of materials, well, not really types, but flavors, I guess. One is called material instance and the other one is called material. You can think of material as just a function of how material instances are calculated. It's I know it's a very difficult way of saying this, but think of it this way. Uh, let's say you have a material that's blue, material that's red, material that's green, right? So a color changes, everything else stays the same. All of them, uh, all of them should be considered a material instance that are derived from one main material that has a color set to a variable, a thing that can change, right? So if I were to create, uh, let me give you an example, a material right here, you right click in your materials folder, right click material, name it color base color base like so, double click on it. This will all open up a new tab. And for the base color, I will just um, right click, type in uh, constant three vector, constant three vector, that is RGB, constant three, right? I plug that in into the first output, I plug that into the base color, and here, uh, as I have this node selected, I can click on this uh, little rectangle here, where I can choose any color I want. Let's say red. Right? And now it becomes red. Easy as that. Right? So you can change the colors this way, uh, to, to any color you want. But, 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 a much cleaner way of doing this would be to right click on the uh, what's the name, uh, this constant three on this color node, right click on it and convert it to parameter. So I'll convert it. I will give it a name, material color. And now this is considered to be a variable, a thing that can change. So now if I save this, I'm saving the material, close this, I have my color base here, but I can also right click on it and create a material instance. I'll, I'll call it color red. Let me create one more instance from this. Create material instance, color blue. Right, so I have red and blue. If I, uh, and you can see here, it says material instance rather than material, right? If I double click on color red here, I can change the material color, right? This is a different type of a menu for material instance, right? We don't have nodes anymore. We only have variables. So I'll tick mark material color and here uh, that's red. So we'll just change it to somewhat red color. Like so, I'll hit save, I'll close it. We have it red. Now here, for color blue, I'll do the same thing. Blue. Save, close. And now we have uh, these two materials that are derived from this one that have, you know, variants in them, right? So that's blue, that's red. 
Hmm. Hello? Oh, there we go. It took a while to, to recalculate. Now, if I go back here to my base material, the color base, I can mess around with, let's say, metallic. What if I want it to be metal, right? I can hold the number one in my on my keyboard uh, and click anywhere on the screen and it creates this kind of constant uh, value. You can also type in constant here, constant value here, right? Not constant three, const just constant, a single number. And I can change that value to one like so and connect it to metallic like that. And now you can see that my material receives this kind of a shine, right? It, it gets the shine attached to it. I can also add another value to the roughness. I don't remember if the roughness by default is 0 or 1 or maybe 0 0.5. So I will just hold 1, click, and I'll definitely add 0 roughness to it. Yeah, yeah, so it was 0 0.5 probably, right? So now if I save this main material, these values of metallic and roughness will be transferred to my color red and color blue, right? So now all, uh, like all of the materials that are derived from this are going to be metallic. I can go even one step further. I can right click on these parameters in my color base, the master material, convert to parameter and call this metallic and convert to parameter, call this roughness. Save. Wait for it. Close it. Open up my, let's say color blue because, or let's go for color red. Let's go for color red. And I'll look at it from the, from the side a little bit so that we can see it changing in the viewport as well. I'll change the met uh, I'll tick mark both metallic and roughness here and I'll just change the the value. So let's actually keep it as one in, in terms of metallic but as I increase the roughness you can see that the reflectivity disappears and it's all it's all done in real time. You can also open up color blue so now I have two tabs here and for this I can also change the roughness. Right? or disable the metallic behavior of it. So that's the principles. That's why we're using instances. All right, so let's move these color red and color blue. Actually, I'll rename them to color um, dark gray. And is it gray or gray? Uh, doesn't matter, color light gray i'll take both of these and i'll ju actually just move them into the instances folder move here just drag them in right and for my color base i'll i'll keep it here because this is the master material and while i'm here i will just say color dark gray well that needs to be dark gray right so r g and b all of those need to be zeroed out so that we Great. <laughs> zero. <laughs> zero. There's like a better way of doing this, of course, but I don't I don't want to deal with that. And I'll just raise the value of the dark gray to be at least above a 5% darkness, something like that. Hmm, maybe that's a little bit too. Yeah, something like that. And then for light gray, same thing. We zero out reds, greens, and blues so that we're in grayscale and just increase the value instead. Do something like this, 0 0.8. <clears throat> okay, I don't want it to be metallic, so I'll zero that, but the roughness needs to be like just slightly rough, 0 0.1. You know, so it's glossy. For the gray, metallic zero, roughness 0 0.2 seems to be fine. We just save them and we call it a day in terms of color. Now let's talk about transparency, transparent materials, glass, right? So to create, uh, and this needs to be called, uh, actually that's fine. So to create a glass 
material, we will just create a new master material and I'll just call it glass master like that. Double click on it. And here we will actually need to change a few settings before we proceed. So the first thing is there's no opacity here and we can't have that. We need opacity for our glass to work. So I will go in here where it says blending mode and I'll change this from opaque to translucent like that. So now there is a possibility to add opacity. I also need to scroll down here and where it says lighting mode, I can't have it volumetric non-directional. I actually need it to be surface translucency volume, right? Like so. After this is done, then I have my glass material. Then for it, um, actually the glass material is pretty easy to work with and um, I will not be creating a tint color. So I will just say that it's a static number. It's going to be one for the base color. One equals pure white. In Unreal Engine, one is, uh, or sorry, in Unreal Engine, glass. Mm, if you want a clear glass, you want it to be, uh, to have a white base color like that. I'm holding one and clicking or double clicking writing a uh, constant like that so one for base color then we will also make it fully metallic so that's one as well like that then for roughness um well glass is almost per uh, hmm. Glass needs to be super glossy, right? So roughness needs to be like very low. So again, one and value. Let's go for 0 0.02, something like that. Plug that in. Yeah, that becomes a mirror. Almost a mirror, a little bit blurry for a mirror, but it's, it's going to work. So that's our roughness. Then for opacity, we kind of want it to be a little bit foggy. So I'm just going to create one more. 0 0.1. 10% opacity. You can see there. Just like a little bubble. And last thing is refraction. How does the glass refract? And this one is a little bit more difficult because as you're looking at the glass straight on, it doesn't really refract as much. Uh, in terms of light, but as you're looking at it at an angle, then it starts refracting more and more, right? So there needs to be a change according to the angle from which you're looking at. And the thing that we use for this is called, right click, Fresnel, F-R-E-S-N-E-L, Fresnel, but it's pronounced Fresnel, like that. And Fresnel reflections, uh, those will be used as an alpha for our linear interpolation. LERP. Just type in L-E-R-P. LERP. Linear interpolate. So that's going to be alpha. That controls the two numbers and which number is used for the refraction. Number one is going to be, or number A, is going to be one. Because that is going to be us looking straight at the bubble um, directly into the middle of the bubble uh, so it doesn't bend light but the value 2 the second value is going to be the refraction of the uh, glass which from the top of my head is 1.52 i use it a lot so <laughs> i i just learned it you can also always google um ref uh, IOR tables for different materials. Glass is 152. Then you connect it like so. Click save. And don't forget to create a material instance from it. And glass master inst, that's fine for a name. I'll just drag it into my instances folder like so. 
have it here so that I can drag it from here. If I double click on this, you can see that there are no um, variables to change. That's because I haven't added any. If I want to later, I can click easily add variables to my master material and they will pop up here. But for now, that's fine. Then I just drag and drop them onto my objects and it's lagging because I'm recording. So it's, it's not having a good time. Um, and basically, yeah, here we just added glass. One thing to note is if your mesh uh, has nanite set to it, so let me navigate to this particular asset. You just select it, right click in the outliner, browse to asset here. If nanite is enabled for it, it's not going to uh, work with transparency. Nanite meshes for now, they don't work with transparency. So just if glass doesn't work, make sure that for that particular object, nanite is indeed turned off. If it lets the light in, but doesn't show the light hitting the surface here, then you, you either have the sun, you know, that the sun is actually not shining through the window, or uh, as you have this plane selected, type in shadow and try unticking cast shadow. That might be the culprit, right? That might be the problem. Okay, so that's done with the glass. Let's move on to uh, textures. Okay, so in terms of textures, uh, there's two things to note. First thing is that I use uh, Substance Painter to create my textures in, in this particular case. And the exports that I get from Substance Painter, well, it depends on what kind of channels you're using uh, to generate the materials. But in general, oh, come on. In general, they look like this. I get the diffuse color, glossiness, and specular. That's for, for the cabinets. So let me just show you a quick one. Diffuse, uh, probably better if I, yep, there we go. That's the diffuse color of my, one of the cabinets, A101, uh, right? And then I have the glossiness, like that and also the specular, like that. Glossiness and specular, that works with uh, when metallic of a material is set to zero. Uh, if you have metallic set to one, then you use roughness and uh, what else was there? One second. Albedo, metalness, normal, and roughness. You use those. So another example of a material is or textures are um, the ones that I downloaded from Quixel and we're, we're going to touch upon it in just a second. The Quixel, which is basically the library for materials to use in Unreal. It's very convenient. I'll show you. But basically these are what you typically get from the Internet, right? So the first thing to do is to go back into Unreal. Let me actually close substance don't need it this was just for me to show you the materials here and then in unreal i'll just create a new material call it texture base um we could we could say stickers but doesn't really matter um let's just call it texture base for now double click that double click it and here, uh, for the base color, we, instead of using a constant three vector, we will use what's called a texture sample. Texture sample. We will immediately right click on it and uh, convert, or actually we will convert it into a parameter, but later. Don't, don't do it right now, because first I kind of want to show you how it works. So let's first create something uh, that's a little bit more visible. So let's try with uh, the textures that I have generated from the Substance Painter, right? This shelf right here. So I will import uh, my textures into my Unreal Engine folder. 
to to do that i'll go to NAC again where it says materials there we go we have instances and we have our base materials i'll right click create a new folder and call it textures double click on that and all of my textures are going to be here so then i will just get all of the exported textures that i got from substance by the way, if you want all of this that I'm doing, all of these files, every single one of them, then just consider supporting the channel, Patreon. Link in the video description. You get every single file that I do in this channel for free if you support the channel. So I get my textures in here. There's also door. I forgot to add a door. There we go. And yeah. Uh, that's that. So now with all of the textures set up, I need to create texture sample for the diffuse, for the color, for the glossiness. For some reason that is black. Uh, we'll figure that one out. And for the specular. So back in the materials, double click on texture base. I can actually dock it right, he dock it right here to be able to switch between the two. And I will just make a control C, control V. Okay. That was control B, my, my bad, control C, control V. And one more time, texture sample. So that's going to be one for the base, one for the specular, and one for the glossiness. And you can see that I don't have a glossiness channel. What do I do? Dealing with a glossiness channel is actually pretty simple. All you need to do is understand that roughness is a reverse of glossiness and if you consider that the colors are within the range of zero being black to one being white for these channels then the glossiness channel is literally roughness minus one or roughness channel is glossiness or one minus glossiness right yeah one minus the glossiness channel so well, we will create a new uh, how's it called the node a new node uh, that is going to be called one minus one minus like that and our glossiness channel will connect to that node and that node is going to connect to our roughness just like that and now to just test it out i will of course convert my base color uh, like all of these into parameters so this is going to be base color or diffuse we can call it diffuse like that then this one is going to be a convert to parameter specular and this one convert to parameter glossiness like that i will also uh, give them some sort of a texture right here just so that they don't complain in the main material so i will just select the diffuse and here for the diffuse let's just go for a101 um a101 diffuse i i remember the uh, naming convention that i used for my textures then here i will just say a0101 uh, we need specular and this one is going to be a101 that's going to be glossiness there we go as i save you can see it updates here so it reflects a little bit differently and it just acts a little bit differently i think it's nice so with this done we have our texture or maybe i should call it not texture but texture sticker base because that is going to be used for the stickers, right? And I will just create a material instance of it. And I'll call it, uh, th in this case, A101. Like that. Drag it over to instances. And that's going to be my first material instance that I've done of, of the sticker. And I will just enable all of the, these uh, tick marks here. And actually, I don't need to change any of the materials here. They're already done, which is nice. Okay, so that's done. Um, I will also create uh, or, or uh, duplicate. It's Control D, 
and it creates A102. That's excellent. That's exactly what I need. A102, duplicate again, A103. And if I remember correctly, for me, it goes up until nine or something like that. So I have quite a few. I will speed up um, this portion of the video in just a second uh, as I'm going to be applying different materials, uh, different textures to these materials. But just to keep it really quick uh, or explain it really quick, I double click on A102 and here I just choose the correct textures. A102, that's the fuse. A102, uh, that's going to be the glossiness. A102, that's going to be the specular. Save that, close that, we're done. We have two of them. That's going to be A101. You can see it's being applied here. Slowly. <laughs> Takes a while. And then A102, is it that one? I think it's that one, yes. It's pretty hard to see. But you can see that yeah there we go so you can see the difference in reflectivity and so on so it all transfers so let me speed up now the the process of me slapping on these materials because it's just gonna take too long one second Whew, okay this is done so finally finally i'm done um we have added or i have added all of the stickers uh to places where stickers need to be added right uh, like so, and the stickers have the correct measure, uh, not measurements, but correct textures. They're the gloss where they need to gloss. They are a little bit more matte where they need to be a little bit more matte. Everything works. So before we end for this tutorial, there are two things that I want to note. One is Quixel Bridge, which is basically a library which you can use to add both materials imperfections, assets and so on into your scene um, for free. With Mm, excellent. Second one is how do you add imperfections onto your surfaces? Those are the two things that we're going to talk about. So first one, the library, Quixel Bridge. You go here to quickly add to the project and click on Quixel Bridge. Once you've clicked it, it's going to open up a new tab like so. And it's going to basically ask you to log in. Please don't show me. Yeah, good. <laughs> I really didn't want it to show my login credentials. Okay, it does ask me to log in here. One second. So once you have logged in, it's going to um, show you all of the things that you can get for free, which is nice. The assets are here where you can get all of the kind of nice interior design stuff, things like fireplaces, furniture, stairs and whatnot there's uh, i personally really like the nature side of things where we can get rocks and whatnot a lot of different assets right but more importantly here we have surfaces as well as imperfections so under surfaces i can find whatever material i want so let me go for metals let's go for uh, gunmetal and I'll just find any any metal that I find uh, useful let's go for brushed aluminum see this one right for some reason it asks me to sign in again I have no idea why but let's first go through the uh, settings I guess so there are not that many for metals the only setting that you should kind of look out for is the quality. There are more here if you choose to uh, go deeper into the mega scans uh, like settings, but I would suggest that you don't really dive too deep here because it's going to become a little bit of a nuisance to fix if you mess something up. So while you're still new, Make sure that you just kind of choose your quality and click on download. Uh, well, for me, it's sign in. Um, let's go for medium. Really? Oh, okay. It actually will download. Agree. Continue. And we can just click on download. 
So once it's downloaded to your uh, machine, you can add, add it, and it just gets slapped in here, right? Let me close it. And now here, a new uh, folder has been created, actually two folders. Uh, this is Megascans presets folder where we have all of the different types uh, of materials. These are where the master materials are and Megascans folder right here, where our surfaces, brushed aluminum, there we go, our brushed metal material is. And I can just take it and slap it onto my, uh, whatever this is, like a fridge, I guess. It's gonna calculate for a little bit to get the shader going but once it's it's done and we get our brushed aluminum fridge right so that's how you deal with the uh, the library right of mega scans quite quite useful another thing is imperfections right so back in here quixel bridge I can go and find imperfections right here and we can go for fingers uh, or fingerprints and just download any one imperfection that we want right let's see we, we have a greasy child that likes to touch things so I just download the fingerprints um, texture here add it and now if I close this, you'll see here under surfaces, there's the fingerprints and there's the material instance actually of the fingerprints. We don't really need it. More, important, more importantly, there is this texture that we will be able to use, right? And actually to just show you how that works, if I were to uh, go to the master material that is using this fingerprints texture then you will see that it's it's a much more complex uh, like map that 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 is being used as masks and so on but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing something much more simple right i will show you how i add uh, fingerprints and scratches onto my materials so here for mega scans and mega scan presets i will not touch them instead I will go to my neck again, um, geometries, materials, textures, and here under textures, I will just create a new folder and call it imperfections. And in this folder, I will add the two imper imp imperfection, sorry, <laughs> imperfection maps that I already have. If you don't have any imperfection maps, I will show you a quick uh, little way of how you can download it, download them. Imperfections, and we'll just go for, I guess, fingers, like that. And you can see it gives us the roughness, like so. And I'll just go for a scratch as well. Why not? Right? So we have these two right here. How do you get them? Well, you just go to the internet and you type in Quixel Megascans. And here you will need to sign in again and then go to um, Surfaces, I believe. No, no, sorry, sorry. Imperfections, uh, Fingerprint, and then here you just sign in to download and you will get your roughness map from there, right? So we have these two. All right, how do you use them together with the materials that you yourself have already created? Well, we will go uh, to our master texture sticker base material right here and we'll add a few more things. So the first thing to um, kind of understand is that the roughness clearly, the roughness texture clearly goes into the um, the, 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 the roughness input here, right? So there's going to be some sort of a collision between glossiness and roughness in here. So I'm going to use a linear interpolation, lerp. 
between the glossiness material that we have here, like that, and some other material right here. The alpha is how much of a mixture are we getting and for now I'm just gonna have it at 0.5 later we'll make it into a variable that we can change. So it's basically gonna be how dirty, right? So for the B input, I will most likely, uh, how do we do this? Uh, let's first get the texture sample in here. Texture sample. And let's get, this is not going to be a variable, right? It's just going to be a texture that we have literally just downloaded. Um, so let me find my imperfections and a um, shortcut is to just take, let's say the, do we start with the fingerprints? I guess we can start with the fingerprints. So let's go for this and just drag them over here. You need to have the texture sample node selected to be able to do this like that. So it gets linked, right? Uh, so we have that one. Then I will, actually I want both of them to kind of to be paired. So I will have the fingerprints as well as the scratches. So the next texture sample is going to have the scratches. Oops, you drag it here. Fingerprint texture sample, scratch texture sample. We need to connect them. You connect things with linear interpolation, lerp. Linear interpolate, like that, and that, and now you get an output, right? And the alpha is 0 0.5, meaning like half of each is going to be used. It's pretty hard to work, uh, like, eventually you kind of get the hang of it, of working without actually seeing the, the change as much. But if you really want to see the change, then you can always just connect it to the base color to see you know, what is it that you have here, All right? So that's linear interpolate. Then uh, we could just straight up take this and connect it to the B input of our glossiness linear interpolate here. And that should kind of give us a little bit of a, of a gloss, not really. Well, let's see. If I save this, then it should start showing up in our scene and we can use that to get a sense of if it's working or not. And it seems like there is a little bit of it going on, but not, not as much as I want, as I would like. So we will need to work on it a bit more. I can also um, change the linear interpolation to one right here, the second linear interpolation to one, to force uh, this lerp to be more of an active lerp, right? So you can see here, there's, yeah, there we go. There, there's like a scratch going on here. The scratches are way too big and everything is just way too, too large. So there are a few things that we need to change. First of all, the texture size. How do you control the texture size? Second thing is um, how do you retain the glossiness values in the scratches as well, right? So if you scratch a glossy material, the scratch itself will be a little bit more glossy than if you scratch a matte portion of the material. It's a little bit of a difficult setup, but if you follow along, you'll yeah you'll you'll get through this. We're very close to the end, so I will add just addition, just a plus sign. I will add my glossiness channel, or in this case, since it's one minus x, now it's the roughness. I will add it with my lerp of the fingerprint and scratch roughness right and when i do it it basically bumps up the the color or the intensity up to the range um of, of you know pure white here so if glossiness is already at sorry if the roughness is at black it's going to kind of lift it with the fingerprints so it, you know if you put the finger fingerprint on the completely matte black surface it's going to become a little bit more glossy 
right? That's at least the idea of it. Then we connect that in, to B of the lerp instead of the original lerp right here. We, we connect it like that. And now at least the setup here is correct. That is done. We are ready to go. Not quite, <laughs> not quite, almost done, almost done. Last thing is the tiling. We need to be able to adjust the tiling and that is the texture coordinates. Um, so we will need the UVs to repeat for the fingerprints, right? So the way you do it is you use texture. That is not how you write texture. Coordinate component like so, and we'll use two of them or both. And you multiply the texture coordinate component, multiply by a number and you connect it to UVs and you do the same thing here. Oops. Nope. You do the same thing here. Multiply by a number connected to UVs, right? And now I can create two numbers holding one click, connect, ah, come on, connect, holding one click, connect like so, right click on these uh, values or, or scalar constants, convert to parameter and call this uh, fingerprint tiling. Fingerprint tiling. And for this one, we can convert this to parameter and call it scratch tiling. So perhaps you will want them to be different sizes, right? So for fingerprint tiling, I will just give it a default value of zero point, uh, or, or sorry, of let's say six, five or six. The minimum tiling that it can possibly have is gonna be 0 0.1. The maximum is gonna be like 20, right? So all I need to do is just select this and I can change the values. And for this one, let's go for five. I tested this out clearly, you know, because I know, know the values. And let's go for a maximum of 20. Click save. Great. And now this should start working. It's a little bit um, aggressive in terms of the fingerprints. You can see how the glossiness just gets completely suffocated out, which uh, means that the LERP, the linear interpolation, that value, uh, sorry, this value right here, that shouldn't be one, right? That should be some other, some different value. So for this, I will actually also create a constant. I will make it into a parameter. I'll call it how dirty, how dirty, connect that to alpha. And it goes, the, the default value is going to be 0 0.45, minimum zero, maximum one, click save and call it a day. Bam. Now, as I am looking at this, you can see that this is still somewhat glossy, but now we have our little fingerprints happening here. This is an important, I, I'm not even sure if, if it's being caught by, I really hope that it's being caught by the, the, the uh, YouTube compression. Um, I'll show this on the floor because it's easiest to see. So instances, uh, texture solid, I just slap it on the floor and just hope for the best. Wait, does that even have it? How dirty? Hmm. Yeah, sorry, for, for uh, the solid texture, I will actually need to go back in there and use some other, other values rather than this, because the glossiness and the specular values, those two are um, messy, uh, because I didn't, uh, didn't create the solid color textures properly. So give me one second, I'll speed through this portion of just creating a new uh, master material and we'll fix the floor.
Okay, so that's done. I have created a new base material, which is, I'll just quickly show you, just to keep it pedagogical. Um, the specular has been replaced with a single value, that is 0 0.833. I just measured the brightness of the cabinet uh, specular values that, that I'm using, and it's 0 point, or 83.3% um, of white color. Right, and then I use uh, 0.15 as my roughness instead of a texture again. Uh, besides that, the diffuse, uh, I get the diffuse from uh, just a solid color um, that is uh, a other diffuse, just a texture. Right, so I end up having something like this. If I save this and kind of take a look at it at an angle. Hopefully you see like scratches here and there on the floor. Hopefully those pop up and I can make them more aggressive by just increasing the how dirty slider to something a little bit higher, like 0 0.90, <laughs> uh, 94, 946, right? So I think 0 0.66 is gonna be the even that is a little bit too too aggressive, 0 0.55, something like that. We we don't want to over, overdo it in terms of the dirtiness. This needs to be a minimal interior, right? So that is about it in terms of the materials. Now you know how to add textures, how to get the library, um, like the materials from the library, how to slap them on, that's so simple. Uh, how to create glass and how to just in general work with the materials. Next up is going to be uh, we're going to start working with a little bit more of a let's see the functionality, the behavior. So I'm just going to uh, now spend some time with this model, just adding materials and preparing for the next tutorial. I'll see you then. Bye.